R.C. Spruill offers a profound exploration of Luke's account of Jesus' birth, emphasizing its fulfillment of Old Testament prophecies, particularly through the role of John the Baptist. Spruill's interpretation is deeply rooted in the historical and theological context of the narrative. At the core of Spruill's message is the contrast between the story's historical realism and mythical fairy tales. He accentuates the authentic historical setting, marked by references to real historical figures such as Caesar Augustus and Quirinius, the governor of Syria. This approach serves to ground the miraculous birth of Jesus in a tangible, real-world context, differentiating it from mere legend or myth. Sproul discusses three kings central to the story. Caesar Augustus, the powerful Roman emperor known for his expansive reign, Jesus Christ, symbolized by his humble birth in a manger, yet acknowledged as the King of Kings, sovereign over all earthly rulers, and God the Eternal King, overarching creator and sustainer of the universe. This triad of kingship forms the backbone of Spruill's sermon, illustrating the interplay between earthly power and divine authority. A significant portion of the sermon is dedicated to elucidating the historical importance of Caesar Augustus, his relationship with Julius Caesar, and the implications of his title, which implied a claim to divinity. Spruill contrasts this with the birth of Jesus, the true incarnation of deity, born in a humble manger due to a lack of space in the inn. Spruill's message affirms the fulfillment of prophecy, the divinity of Christ, and the humility of God's approach to mankind. He portrays the nativity story as a pivotal moment in history, where the divine intersects with the human, challenging the arrogance of earthly powers with the humility of the divine. The sermon is a call to recognize the profound implications of this event in human history and its enduring significance in Christian faith. Also, Spruill delves into the humble and significant circumstances surrounding the birth of Jesus Christ, asserting the profound theological implications of this event. The narrative begins with Joseph, adhering to a decree from Caesar Augustus, traveling from Nazareth in Galilee to Bethlehem in Judea. This journey was significant because Bethlehem was the city of David, and Joseph was a descendant of David's line. While Roman law didn't necessitate the presence of a man's wife for census and tax purposes, Joseph made the critical decision to bring Mary, who was nearing the time of childbirth. Sproul highlights that there were both immediate and ultimate reasons for this journey. On the surface, Joseph wanted to be with Mary during her labor. However, Sproul indicates that the deeper, more divine reason aligns with ancient prophecy. Centuries earlier, the prophet Micah had foretold that a pivotal figure, anointed by God, would come from Bethlehem. Micah 5, 2. This prophecy's fulfillment was evident in the birth of Jesus. The conditions of Jesus' birth were marked by simplicity and a profound sense of humility. With no proper lodging available in Bethlehem, Mary gave birth to Jesus in a manger, a stark contrast to typical royal births. This setting, Jesus wrapped in basic cloths and laid in a feeding trough or a makeshift cradle, significantly reflected the nature of his life and mission. Jesus' life was characterized by humility, as he had no permanent home or place of his own, maintaining his message and ministry. This narrative by Spruill powerfully conveys the humility ingrained in Jesus' entry into the world, which was not only a fulfillment of prophecy, but also a defining characteristic of his earthly journey. The conditions of his birth and the simplicity of his life are depicted as profound reflections of his divine mission, pointing out humility, simplicity, and fulfillment of God's will. Moreover, sudden glory is an evocative depiction of the birth of Christ, masterfully intertwining themes of humility and divine exaltation. The narrative begins with the infant Jesus, portrayed in a state of humility, swaddled in simple cloths in a modest setting. However, Spruill reiterates that this moment of humility is simultaneously a moment of divine glory, skillfully balancing these two seemingly contradictory states. The setting then shifts to the outskirts of the village, where shepherds, considered the lowest in social hierarchy, are engaged in their nocturnal duties. 
These shepherds live in basic conditions, guarding flocks that belong to themselves and others. Their routine is monotonous, filled with the responsibilities of watching over the sheep and protecting them from dangers such as wild animals or thieves. The tranquility of the night, described as silent and serene, is suddenly shattered by a miraculous event. Without any forewarning, an angel of the Lord appears to the shepherds. This celestial being is surrounded by the glory of God, transforming the ordinary night into a moment of extraordinary revelation. This appearance is defined as a theophany, a concept frequently encountered in the Old Testament, where the invisible God manifests visibly, often accompanied by the Shekinah glory. The Shekinah is depicted as a radiant, overpowering presence, so intense that it often causes people to avert their gaze and bow in reverence. The shepherds, engrossed in their mundane tasks, are caught off guard by this divine manifestation. The Shekinah glory, illuminating their surroundings, symbolizes not just a literal brightness, but also a metaphorical illumination of divine presence and revelation. This juxtaposition of the humble birth of Christ and the magnificent display of divine glory repeats a central theme in Christian theology, the coexistence of humility and exaltation in the divine plan. Sproul's narrative vividly captures this paradox, portraying a moment where earthly humility meets heavenly glory, leaving a lasting impression of awe and wonder. Furthermore, Sproul offers a profound analysis of the biblical account where shepherds witness the Shekinah glory and their subsequent intense fear. This moment, as described in the Gospel of Luke, serves as a backdrop for Sproul to explore the pervasive theme of fear and reassurance in the New Testament. He particularly focuses on the angel's message to the shepherds, Fear not, which he notes as a common divine exhortation throughout the scriptures. Sproul draws an intriguing parallel between this biblical narrative and the philosophical musings of Friedrich Nietzsche, the 19th-century existential nihilist. Nietzsche's philosophy, steeped in the belief that life is inherently meaningless, promotes what he calls dialectical courage, a concept of courage that is contradictory and irrational in the face of life's futility. This idea, as Sproul underlines, starkly contrasts with the message of hope and purpose in the New Testament. The central thesis of Sproul's discussion juxtaposes Nietzsche's nihilism with the New Testament's message of hope. He underscores the reassurance Jesus offers, be of good cheer for I have overcome the world, as a direct counter to Nietzsche's doctrine of meaninglessness. This biblical assertion of overcoming the world provides a foundation for joy and courage, which is not irrational but grounded in the transformative event of Christ's victory. The angel's annunciation to the shepherds is also critical in Sproul's analysis. He emphasizes the significance of this message being delivered to shepherds, a group marginalized in society, thus accentuating the inclusive nature of the Christian gospel. The birth of a Savior, Christ the Lord, is proclaimed as good news for all people, contrasting with Nietzsche's idea of the Ubermensch, who defies a meaningless world alone. In sum, Sproul masterfully contrasts the fear and despair prevalent in human philosophical thought with the message of hope, joy, and reassurance found in the Christian narrative of Christ's birth. He portrays the biblical message as not only a remedy for fear, but also as an offering of deep, meaningful purpose, in contrast to existential nihilism. In addition, the biblical narrative of the announcement of Jesus Christ's birth to the shepherds is vividly recounted. The event begins with a singular angel, possibly Gabriel, making the celestial announcement. This angel is soon accompanied by a vast multitude of heavenly hosts, signifying a significant moment in Christian theology. These angels deliver a profound message that encapsulates the glory of God and the promise of peace on earth. This moment marks the inaugural singing of Gloria in Excelsis Deo, a phrase deeply embedded in the tradition of Christmas carols and hymns, resonating with the joy and reverence of the season. The narrative then pivots to focus on the shepherd's reaction to this divine encounter. Overwhelmed with awe and inspiration, 
The shepherds engage in a dialogue amongst themselves, reflecting their astonishment and eagerness. Their decision to journey to Bethlehem is spurred by a desire to witness the sign the angel proclaimed. This leads them to the manger where Mary, Joseph, and the baby Jesus are found, affirming that their primary intent is to see the newborn Christ. Upon witnessing Jesus, the shepherds are transformed. They become messengers themselves, actively spreading the news of this miraculous birth. Their approach to evangelism is multifaceted. They do not solely rely on the transformation in their lives as a silent testimony. Instead, they vocally share their experiences and the angelic message. This active dissemination of their encounter and the message of Jesus' birth asserts a crucial aspect of Christian evangelism, the importance of verbal witness alongside personal transformation. Spruill's commentary illuminates the significance of the shepherd's role in the nativity story. Their reaction to the divine announcement is not passive, but involves immediate action and vocal sharing. Their story demonstrates the impact of witnessing a divine event and the imperative to share this experience with others, serving as a model for active, communicative faith. Last but not least, Spruill dives deeply into the contrasting responses of the shepherds and Mary to the birth of Jesus Christ, highlighting the profound spiritual implications of this event. Spruill speculates about the duration and depth of the shepherds' marvel and joy following their divine encounter, suggesting that this experience was transformative, potentially leading to a lifelong change in their faith. The shepherds, upon witnessing this miracle, responded with outward expressions of praise and glory to God, embodying the essence of Christian worship and devotion. In stark contrast, Mary's reaction to the events surrounding Jesus' birth and life is introspective and contemplative. Spruill indicates Mary's deep, ongoing reflection on each significant event, from Jesus' circumcision to his discussions with temple scholars as a child. This introspection extends to everyday moments, like tucking Jesus into bed and to the painful witnessing of his crucifixion. Her contemplation culminates in a mixture of sorrow and awe at his resurrection, which is portrayed as a moment of triumph and exaltation. Spruill's interpretation of these responses maintains two distinct yet complementary forms of Christian faith expression— the outward praise and glorification exemplified by the shepherds, and the inner reflective faith embodied by Mary. He suggests that both are vital aspects of the Christian experience. The shepherds' response is likened to the Christian duty of glorifying God, joining in the celestial chorus that acknowledges Jesus as the Lamb worthy of all glory. Concluding with a prayer, Spruill expresses gratitude for the lessons of faith and wisdom that arise from contemplating the life of Jesus, who is revered not just as a miraculous child, but as a figure of wisdom, stature, and ultimately, the King of glory. This reflection blends personal faith journeys with a collective recognition of Jesus' central role in Christian theology and practice. In conclusion, Spruill's insightful interpretation of the nativity story in Luke's Gospel is a rich tapestry of historical context and theological depth. He differentiates the historical realism of Jesus' birth from mythical narratives by pointing out the narrative's grounding in reality, citing historical figures such as Caesar Augustus and Quirinius. This approach reinforces the authenticity of Jesus' birth, presenting it as a tangible event in history rather than a mere legend. Further, central to Spruill's sermon is the exploration of three pivotal figures, Caesar Augustus, Jesus Christ, and God. Augustus, the powerful Roman emperor, represents earthly power and authority, while Jesus' humble birth in a manger signifies a contrasting form of kingship, symbolizing divine sovereignty and humility. God's overarching kingship completes this triad, reiterating the intersection of divine authority and earthly power. Besides, Spruill digs into the significant circumstances surrounding Jesus' birth, repeating its alignment with Old Testament prophecies. Joseph's journey to Bethlehem with Mary, despite not being required by Roman law, fulfills the prophecy of Micah, indicating the divine orchestration behind these events. The simplicity of Jesus' birthplace, a manger, 
starkly contrasts with traditional royal births, symbolizing Jesus' mission of humility and service. Additionally, Spruill beautifully juxtaposes the humility of Jesus' birth with the divine exaltation evident in the shepherd's encounter with the angelic host. This narrative illustrates the profound coexistence of humility and glory within the Christian faith. Also, Spruill contrasts the existential nihilism of Friedrich Nietzsche with the hope and purpose found in the New Testament. He underlines the angel's message of fear not to the shepherds as emblematic of the gospel's reassurance and hope, in contrast to Nietzsche's philosophy of life's inherent meaninglessness. Lastly, Spruill's narrative culminates in the contrasting responses of the shepherds and Mary to Jesus' birth, the shepherd's immediate outward praise and Mary's reflective contemplation showcase diverse yet complementary expressions of Christian faith. This multifaceted portrayal underscores the depth and complexity of the Christian response to the divine, encapsulating the essence of Spruill's interpretation of the nativity story.